Welcome to this opening video of the Petrov Defense, and I'm also going to give you some bonus uh, opening, if, if you want to call it that, bonus material. Uh, it will, the bonus is, is just basically going to be the Halloween Gambit, because the Petrov Defense, I'll explain why. The Petrov Defense is, a, is, is an opening played by Black. As long as it's played properly, it just cuts, cuts out all the crap from 1E4. It cuts out the Roy Lopez, the Scotch, Scotch Gambit. And, it, and on all the other crap that mostly stems from um, 1e4, the Max Lange, and everything else. So, it's not a opening where Black's trying to gain a massive advantage immediately. It's it, it, it's nothing like that. It's Troy's position, it's pretty solid, and, and it's just waiting. Black's waiting for White to make a mistake. And should White play properly, he's going to be sat there waiting for Black to make a mistake. So, really, you're going to be playing a game of chess where you're waiting for the first mistake to be made. And whoever makes the first mistake in the Petrov usually loses. So it starts with 1e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to f6. And in this position, if like me, when you played the Petrov, unknowingly playing the Petrov, just to try and go out and have a break from the Roy Lopez and everything else that comes with it. Um... White takes on e5 immediately with a knight. You sat here as black saying, Do I retake on e4 immediately? When I usually retake immediately on e4, I sometimes end up in a very uncomfortable position. Now, okay, I'm going to answer that question right now. Do not take on e4 immediately because if white knows what he's going to play, or he knows the Petrov, should I say, you're going to have a very terrible game. I'll show you why. After black takes on e4, white, knowing if he knows what he's doing, is going to play queen to e2. And if we, after we move the knight back, white can play the knight to c6, which is a discovered attack or check to the king, an attack on our queen, and even if the queen blocks, an attack on the queen. So we're going to lose the queen. That is the uh, trap for white to play against us if we are playing the Petrov. So you sat there saying, well, oh, I want to win my pawn back. Why do I want to play the Petrov if I'm just going to lose a pawn? Well, it's not the case. What we should do immediately is play d6, kicking this knight back. So after the knight moves back, now we can win the pawn on e4. So we've got a pawn back. And if uh, White does what he's supposed to do, we'll go over that one in a minute. Still goes for the similar line. Uh, I don't know why those arrows came up. Uh, with queen to e2, hopefully going for the same sort of stuff, we can... Uh, block. It's important to block the pin immediately from the queen, because if we don't block the pin immediately from the queen and play d5 immediately, this wins the knight. So we don't want to go down that road. Remember here, um, if you played correctly up to yet, and White still is insistent on going queen to e2, we block the pin first off. So then, if White plays d3 now. We can move the knight away. The knight is safe. The queen is guarded. So we're asking why is black. What do you want to do? Do you want to take my queen? We we can ask ourselves. Do we want to take white's queen? It doesn't really. Whatever happens from here doesn't really matter. It's a fairly drawish position. Both these bishops are stuck. Even if black takes, he's still hitting the knight, and there's an argument to be said that we we want to take this queen. Because after white retakes, assuming he's going to take with the bishop, because he may want to castle, and he won't be able to castle if he takes with the king, then we might want to play g6 and bring the bishop out this way. It's a very drawish game, should black play it properly, and white play it properly. Um, so, yeah. And what happens if... Um, okay. White plays to d4. Well, we just solidify the knight on e4, and okay, white is slightly better here. But that's that's if Stockfish is playing as white as a human. Both both of our bishops is black is getting as easily developed as whites. Our knight is uh, sat forward, and there's no easy attack on the knight. There's no easy way to re remove the knight. It's it's a good knight sat there on e4. It's it's sat in white's camp with. Hitting, um, you know, it's, it's got a nice attack on it. It's got pressure already on F2 so early on. And we're only on move, what, five? So, 
as you can see you know as black it's not to get a, a great a massive winning advantage should should black and white both play properly you've got uh you come out of the opening to the middle game where um, both you know white's got no more advantage as than what he had before the first move was played because what i mean by that if you don't already know that white has these a very slight advantage in every game of chess because he has the first move he sort of gets to dictate which way the game's going to go so um right so we've gone over if what if ha happens if white takes on e5 we we know not to take immediately on e4 we know to support the knight support the push kick the white knight away and and go on from there so uh what happens if white is a scotch player and tries to go for the d4 anoints that, that comes with the scotch we can just take on e4 and if white tries to kick our knight away we just solidify the knight and white can take on e5 and we can just play bishop to d6 look at the position it's identical it's it, again white has got the exact same advantage as what he had when the game before the first move was played of the game it's absolute draw it, it's absolutely fine it's solid it's 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 very same position no no one's got white's got no more advantage over us as black black's got no more advantage over white uh, the only advantage White has got is that it's his next move. It, the next move is his. That is the only advantage White has got, and it, it's 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 been like that from the first move being played on. Okay, so we've we've gone over what happens if uh, Black play. Uh, sorry, White plays to d4. So what if White plays to c3? The knight to c3. Then we can just go into the four knights game. Something if you played the Petrov, it, it's sort of what you want to see. Because you've got into the four knights game without seeing the Roy Lopez and all the crap that comes with the Roy Lopez, it, it cuts out the crap from the Scotch. Because you've also you've, you've got you've got another attacker or defender, if you would like to call it, of the d4 square. You've got you better control of d4 before you leave the opening. So from here, I'm going to go into the bonus material, which is the Halloween Gambit. So if you want to learn the Halloween Gambit, I'm going to play it as White's perspective here so you can get into the four knights game in any way you can get into the four knights game reasonably easy if black plays the petrov you can get into it reasonably easy if you just don't play the d4 or the bishop to b5 going to the roy lopez whatever else so the halloween gambit is great against uh, okay it's not a great opening it, there's a few traps um black is usually always better after sacrificing this knight here on e5 black's always better but black isn't stockfish that's the whole point where well, you're gonna overwhelm black with lots of pressure and make development very hard for him and we're asking black to make a uh, at some point a very natural move that gives us advantage but We've got to hope that black. If you're playing the Halloween Gambit, you're sort of playing hope chess. You got to hope that black's just going to play the most natural move to him. So, okay, it's been played a few times at the Grandmaster level. It's been played not that many times at the low. It's not played very often, so there's a strong possibility black may not know what he's doing. I'd definitely give it a go in blitz, if possibly rapid. I'll definitely try it's not one for me but if you if you want to know the halloween gambit and here you are this is your bonus material don't say i don't give you anything for nothing i'm giving it you so you know absolutely free so after black retakes on e6 well why would he not he he's got a free knight white's going to play d4 kicking this knight away and if the knight comes back to c6 then white's going to play to d5 the black black knight can come back to e5 and then white is going to play f4 and the knight has to come back to um g6 because where's the, the knight can't come anywhere he, he literally can't go anywhere his all all the squares we would want to put the knight are taken up this is the point of the halloween gambit so we sort of cramp him black up a little bit and then after the knight goes back to g6 we're going to play e5 after the knight comes back to g8 now it doesn't necessarily have to come back to g8 it is known here for black to retake on d5 and white to retake with the queen or the knight and this is black just giving 
giving material back and um, basically playing in a position where White has slightly overextended his centre pawns. It's still, still dangerous, but you know, and if you're playing the Halloween Gambit, you're sort of hoping that Black's playing greedily. So let's say Black's playing greedily, and below 17, 1800, Black's going to play greedily more than likely. So after the knight goes back to its starting square, poor little knight, we're going to play d6. And after the pawn takes, we're going to retake with the pawn on d6. And here, what, what, okay, it's Black's move, but what is White threatening? White's well, threatening to win back material by playing queen to e2 check. So, Black's got a block with one of these moves. Okay, he's, he's not going to put the he's not going to play the queen to e7, is he? He'll just lose the queen uh, with with the pawn taken on e7. So, what White is threatening here is playing queen to e2 check and saying to Black, "You have to give a piece back." Um. And ruin black structure basically. Um, white will get a lot more superior development. White, uh, sorry, black's got to play a lot of, a lot of moves to start them getting development back natural. If that makes sense, I'm sure. But just by looking at the position, you you know what I mean. Uh, this bishop can't move. Yeah, I suppose this knight can come back out. But how many times has black moved this knight now? It's crazy. White can just. You know, all it takes is a pawn push, kicking Black's knight again, and you've got full squares for the uh, all the squares back for the dark square bishop. Look, it, it's it's a plus, uh, sorry, minus one point two advantage to Black. Um, but again, Black isn't stockfish. You're playing another human being. Okay, the best move for Black is to play. Sorry, no, it's not the best move. It's um, it's it's the. Uh, it's it's the move that 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 Black's gonna play if he's if he's greedy if he really doesn't want to give back the material because what he's saying is, okay, you give me queen to e two check, I put my king here, and I, and I save my pieces. But now there's a plus three advantage to White. Basically, White's just gonna come over here, give a check, and well, this king's not castling. Our king's gonna castle. We, we we're probably hoping to get it castled. And, and get the rook to e1 and start really smashing down on the black's king that's now stuck in the center he's going to struggle to get his king to safety because all the pieces are blocking the king into the center and like i've just said how's this knight getting developed okay this is the only move it's out of the game he can't come here anymore he no, don't want to come here unless he wants to give the material back so um that is the idea of the halloween gambit now if you get to this position is black the, the move is queen to f6 and that just stops everything you're threatening to win this pawn and get your development back for the dark square bishop and if queen to e2 happens um well well it's it, it's fairly easy you just by moving the queen to f6 you gave your king a breathing square okay you're not developing um but this pawn's falling and then after the next couple of moves you know you're threatening this pawn and then you're going to push this pawn up. You're going to get this bishop out. You, you're going to try and artificially castle. And that's how black's got to play. So that that's the idea for black. And after the um, the black moves his queen to f6, black's okay. Black is absolutely fine. He's got a, a decent advantage. Actually, he's, he's up material. Black's just got to not play greedy. He's, he's got to play sensible. So like I said, Halloween Gambit for White is probably great in a bullet, bullets maybe rapid, depending on the ratings, as long as it's not too experienced or high. Not many people, you'll be surprised how many people don't actually know the Halloween Gambit. It, it, it's a fun one, definitely, but it's not one for me, personally. Um, but definitely, I, I, I've played it, had a, quite a bit of fun with it. It's, it's definitely worth looking into. But there's one move in for black. Now I'm going to switch switch it over to black, where black can really keep a hold of his advantage. I'm going to show you the best way to defend against the Halloween Gambit as black. When we move after we re, after we take the knight on 
e5 okay we'll show you from here is black we're playing his black's perspective we're trying to keep her advantage and tell why he's he's a muppet for playing the halloween gambit okay so after the black knight takes on e5 we, we're up material and white plays uh d4 pushing our knight back to c6 saying ha ha i'm successfully pulling out the halloween gambit on you you're going to move your knight back here and i'm going to win no 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 let's not play greedy as black let's just let's keep our advantage that whites generously gave us we're going to play the bishop to b3 and the point is if white takes here we're going to take the pawn on e4 and if white plays the uh, actually proper move to queen to d4 look at what we're doing now we, we we're threatening the discovered checks on black there's a whole lot of pressure here there's a discovered attack coming this this knight is pinned it can't retake here so he's not actually helping the queen take the knight on e4 um the, the the if the queen comes and takes the bishop then we're going to put uh white in a whole a whole lot of hell with the discovered check that's coming um so yeah so let's say white says i give up over here i'm just going to win you rook and threaten mate on h8 well, now we are absolutely um, saying to why this is why you don't play the Halloween Gambit, because I'm going to take your knight, and I'm up material again with a discovered check from the queen. So let's say white blocks. White's only move really is to block with the bishop. I suppose he could block with a white square bishop. It doesn't make a whole lot of diff lot of Well, he, actually, no, he can't block with this bishop. Sorry, because this is mate. Um. So yeah, White's only reasonable move is to block the bishop to uh, bishop t3. And from here we can just um, pull the knight back to d5 if we want. And give a discovered check from this bishop. So what what's White going to do? He's, I suppose White could block here. You can do whatever you want. You can take this bishop. I would just take the bishop. And go for this 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 trade here and again what what the hell is white gonna do it only move really is this this sort of stuff and black's gonna have a great game okay you've got to look after this rook so well it is fairly easy after um let's say white blocks just bring the rook back here the king can't castle either way and black's going to have a fine game with a decent advantage it's a, it's a minus one advantage for for black to 1.2 so yeah there's your bonus material there's how to play the halloween's gambit there's how to play against the halloween's gambit there's how to play the petrov so um there, sh there should be no complaints from you guys should be none but anyway like i said like i always say at the, at the end of every video Please give me a like, please give me a follow or subscribe, whatever it's called on YouTube. I'm used to Twitch. I apologize. There's, you know, there's Twitch, there's Twitch, there's Twitch on the video. Give me a subscribe, give me a like. I'd rather you not give me a dislike, but if you do, you do. I mean, damn. You know, just if you really want to, if you really don't like the video, just tell me how to improve. I'd appreciate it. You know, I'll take it on the chin. Leave it in the comments. Um, if you dislike it, dislike it. There's nothing I can do about it. Why am I blabbering on? Just, yeah, okay. What I'm saying is, any feedback, good or bad. If it's good, I'll continue to do it. If, it, if something's bad, then I apologize and I'll, I'll do my best to change it at the end of the day. If you're not happy and, and I want more subscribers, I need to make you happy. Tell me what I'm doing bad. Tell me what I'm doing good. Give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe. Yeah, I need to go. I need to go. I'm blabbering on. Sorry, guys. I'll uh, catch you in the next one.